against this president of the United States. Transform this country and create an economy and a government that works for all, not just the people on top. I am not the president of the globe. I don't want to be the president of the world. They say, oh, Bernie can't be Trump. I would urge them to take a look at the last 60 national polls. And what this campaign is doing is bringing together blacks and whites and Latinos, Native Americans, Asian Americans, the gay community, the straight community. We are standing together for an agenda that works for all of us, not just wealthy campaign contributors. Because he was brave, but he got hit hard. He's a, a very special man, retired Marine Corps Major General. And most of you know, he received the Congressional Medal of Honor, James E. Livingston. And James, just relax. Where's James? has received more campaign contributions, some 8 million, from more Americans, about 2 million. That is more contributions from more people than any campaign in the history of the United States of America. read them off, and I'll read like with James or with so many of the Congressional Medal of Honors. Many are not living, to be honest with you. And I'll read stories where one of them recently, going up a hill, hit 19 times by gunfire, grabbing four people, bringing them down, getting onto a helicopter, falling out of the helicopter, hitting a tree on the way down. Hitting a tree. They went back and saved him, but he died later. I mean, those are tough deals. Those are tough deals. And we have one right here who's living. We have one right here who's living. As the son of the American working class who grew up in a rent-controlled apartment, I am proud to tell you that this is a campaign of the working class, by the working class, and for the working industrial complex is really nervous. Street is getting nervous. The insurance industry is getting nervous. The drug companies who charge us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, they're getting nervous. And what is the greatest country on the face of the earth? that's destroying this planet getting nervous the prison industrial complex they're getting nervous what they're saying is you see and these crowds turnouts like this all over the country make them very nervous we've lifted 10 million people off welfare including 7 million off of food stamps and that's a good thing not a bad thing they're working and they have great jobs and they love getting up in the morning and they're making much more money and it costs our country nothing we make money but they pay taxes it's a whole different deal median household income has reached the highest level in the history of our country the unemployment rate nationwide has hit the lowest rate in over 50 years. The average unemployment rate for my administration is the lowest for any U.S. president in recorded history. How about that one? That's a good one. That's a good one. The unemployment rate among African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Asian Americans has reached record lows. Black youth Unemployment has reached an all-time low.
and they will find that 56 out of 60 times we beat Trump. That's not something that I can do alone. We got to do it together. Policies and delivering record gains for African Americans. We are going to compete for every single vote in 2020, and we expect to win a historic share of the black vote come election day. We are supporting working families by fighting paid. We got something that nobody thought could happen. Paid family leave, reducing the cost of child care and giving 40 million American families an average of $2,200 more in their pocket thanks to the Republican child tax credit. Republican, not Democrat. We are reversing decades of calamitous trade policies that decimated manufacturing all across your state and all across our country. For years, politicians sold you out to global special interests, enriching other countries at your expense. That ended. That ended. But I am not the president of the globe. I don't want to be the president of the world. I am the president of the United States of America. The United States has the lowest voter turnout rate of any major country on earth, and together we have got to change that. No, we have got to stand up and fight for democracy, get involved in the political process. See, and I'm politically correct, not using a plastic bottle. Now, what does it mean? You know, some of you may have seen the food fight that uh, appeared to be a debate the other night. And that's sad, because we need serious discussion. There are a lot of serious crises facing this country, and they have to be discussed. And that was not a mechanism to do that. But what politics is about, really, when you get beyond what media tries to do, it's not complicated. It is saying, what is going on in our country today? How do we get to where we are? And where do we want to go? And when we talk about where we want to go, I always remember a brilliant short statement by Nelson Mandela. And what Mandela said, I want you to, to think about what he said. He said, everything is impossible until it happens. Last month we fought innocent lives. I recently invited to the White House the granddaughter of a 92-year-old woman who was raped, beaten, brutalized, and murdered by an illegal alien who had previously been set free in New York City. Here in Charleston County, an illegal alien was recently charged with sexually assaulting a young girl in the fourth grade. In Berkeley County, officers captured a previously deported MS-13 gang member who shot a man to death before dousing the body in gasoline and setting him on fire. And he should have never been in our country. He shouldn't have allowed. He shouldn't have been allowed. until it happens. It was impossible a hundred plus years ago of where we want to be. And what I'm asking you and what I'm begging you is don't listen to the media and their definition of reality. Don't listen to Congress and their definition of reality. Ask yourself where this great country should be going. On respirator. They're on respirator. 
They're on mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. You can do it. I'm not doing it. They're on mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, the Never Trumpers. But you think it's easy? It's not. But that's being built. But you know what they say now? Okay, he's building the wall. But Mexico's not paying for it. Yes, they are. I actually, they are. They are. They are paying for it. And some of the fake news knows that, but they refuse to report it. But that's okay. You'll see. You'll see what's going on. And I want to thank Mexico because, by the way, right now they have 27,000 soldiers on our border protecting our border. We have Mexico protecting us. And they only do that for Trump. They don't do that for Sleepy Joe. They don't do that for Crazy Bernie. And they don't do it for Mini Mike, that's for sure. They're only doing that for Trump, right? Only 27,000 soldiers protecting our border. In this region of the country alone, last year, ICE. Oh, they've been treated so badly, right? They are great. They're brave. They're tough. Any men, they're tough guys in here, but anybody want to be an ICE officer, it's tough stuff, right? They go. And then when you do that, and when you look at the issues facing the country, and you know them better than I, and then you say where we want to go, the answers are not hard. For infrastructure, roads, bridges, water systems, wastewater plants should not be falling apart. We're going to invest in rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure and create millions of good paying union jobs. In America, 500,000 people should not be homeless tonight, and 18 million families should not be spending 50% of their income on housing. We're going to build 10 million units of low-income and affordable housing. Last year, ICE officers arrested 12,000 criminal aliens charged or convicted of dangerous offenses, including robbery, rape, and many for a thing called murder. On Wednesday, we won the big case in federal court. Did you see that? Did you see that? We won the case. Unanimously, unanimously, federal appeals court, where we don't have to give money to sanctuary cities and states if they don't work with us. Finally. And when we talk about an agenda that works for working people, we understand that there is nothing more important than education. And we believe that all of our children, no matter what their income is, no matter what their zip code may be, are entitled to high quality education. I know they give fair opinions. It bears no relationship to who appoints them. But I never win with an Obama appointed judge. Ever. I don't win. No, we have great judges going on to the courts. Great judges. They're fair judges. They're judges that truly love our Constitution. Right. And they're judges that if we feel it's right, they don't want to invite the world to trespass across our borders. Very simple. The Democrat field also supports deadly sanctuary cities that release violent criminal aliens. You know that. You've been reading. You, all you have to do is pick up a paper every day. They release these horrible criminals to terrorize our communities. We don't do that anymore. We won't let it happen. And now we don't have to give sanctuary cities and states the money that they're going to want. It's a whole game changer. And that is why we're going to triple funding for Title I low-income schools. What bad people? Republicans believe America should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans, not for criminal aliens. Thanks to our tireless efforts to secure the border, we have reduced illegal border crossings by a staggering 75% since last spring, and we have ended catch and release permanently. 
You know what catch and release is? We will end the international disgrace of being the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to every man, woman, and child as a human right. We catch them. We grab them. We say, could we please have your address? Address? I don't know. What the hell is an address? And we say, please report back in four years from now for your trial. And about 2% come back. And they're the ones that are the dumbest people I've ever seen. 2%. Nobody comes back. It's crazy. But we're getting a change. And it would be so easy. They're called loopholes. Loopholes. That word alone. They're called loopholes. It would be so easy if we had some Democrat support. We don't have any Democrat support. They want open borders. They don't care about crime. Border Patrol has seized the largest amount of deadly narcotics ever in the history of our country this last year. We have deported record numbers of gang members. We are building the wall faster than ever, and we will soon be building more than one mile a day. And I want all of you to understand this. Right now in America, we are spending twice as much as the people in Canada and in virtually every other major country. You can go to Canada, you can go to Europe, and you can buy the same exact prescription drug, in some cases, for one-tenth the price that the drug companies are selling it to us here. And then, to add insult to injury, and this is really unbelievable because it speaks to the cruelty, the extreme cruelty of this system. 500,000 people a year go bankrupt because of medically related debt. We killed the individual mandate, which is the most unbelievable, horrible. And it's not really Obamacare anymore, but we're running the Hulk of it. And we're trying to kill it entirely, and then we will put it back. You'll have great health care, and pre-existing conditions will be totally protected. Pre-existing conditions will be totally protected. We're making health care better and much cheaper. While premiums more than doubled in the five years before I took office, we are now offering plans already that are up to 60% less expensive than the old Obamacare. Think of that. And better, and better. We are stopping surprise medical billing a disgrace. And I signed an executive order imposing price transparency because when providers are required to show their prices, which they don't have to do, but now they do, those same prices fall very, very fast. We have approved a record number of affordable new generic drugs, which are just as good as the name brand drugs, but at a tiny fraction of the cost. They're just as good. I always like a name brand. I mean, there's something, there's no difference. Probably sometimes they're better. We've totally transformed veterans' health care, getting long sought VA choice and VA accountability passed after 50 years. And hopefully nobody in this great arena needs it. But we have passed something that they said couldn't happen. The spectacular right to try. You know what that is. If you're terminally ill, you go all over the world. If you have no money, you can't. You go home and you die. You're terminally ill. They go all over the world if they have money. They go to Asia, they go to Europe, they want to, they're searching. We have the greatest doctors in the world, the greatest labs in the world, greatest technicians in the world. And we have pipelines of drugs coming out for different problems. And now you sign a piece of paper, we're not going to hold anybody liable, you get to use that drug. And the results have been unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hopefully you don't need but now we have right to try. They've been trying for 51 years to get that approved. 51 years. And we got it approved. I guess I'm good at getting things approved, aren't I? Those people that I brought up here were the reason, too. Every one of them. They were incredible. Thank you.
Think about that one for a second. Think about the ugliness of that. Climate change is ravaging our country and the planet. What they are telling us is that the polar ice caps are melting at a faster rate than they had previously thought, that the oceans are warming at a faster rate than they had thought, and the sea levels are going up and up at a faster rate. What they are telling us is that there is more drought than they had anticipated, more extreme weather disturbances. Virtually every Democrat candidate has declared their unlimited support for extreme late-term abortion, ripping babies straight from the mother's womb right up until the very moment of birth. That is why I've asked Congress to prohibit late-term abortion of babies, because Republicans believe that every child is a sacred gift of God. Except for Tiffany, apparently. Disturbances. What they are telling us is that the ocean is becoming more acidic, which means fish are dying and people who get their protein from the ocean will no longer be able to do that. And what the United Nations is telling us is if we don't get our act as we transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. And the Democrat Party is the party of high taxes, high crime, open borders, late-term abortion, socialism, blatant corruption, and the total obliteration of your Second Amendment. Fighting for citizens from every background, every community, and every walk of life. And because climate change is obviously not just an American issue, but a global issue, my job, if I'm elected president, is to tell China, tell Russia, tell India, tell Pakistan that we are in this. And when we talk about issues that must be addressed, we have got to deal with a broken and racist criminal justice system. It is not acceptable to me, nor to you, that we have more people in jail today disproportionately African-American, Latino, and Native American than any other country on earth. Party. You know, they came to me, a group of people, and they wanted criminal justice reform. And I wasn't sure about the issue, but we had a lot of great Republicans very much in favor of it, including people that happened to be right here today. And they were very much... And I started studying the issue, worked hard on the issue. And criminal justice reform, you saw Alice Johnson come out of prison, 22 years. She had another 20 years left, think of it, for a phone call, for a phone call. A great woman, but we have many people coming out that shouldn't be there for anywhere near those terms, not for those terms. But they came to see me, a group, a group of people came, Van Jones, he came up. Oh, thank you, sir. They needed four senators. They needed help. I called Lindsay. I called everybody. I called Tim, who's so great on everything. I called everybody. They needed four senators and maybe five, and they needed help with some of the ones that weren't moving in the right direction. And I gave it to them, and I got it, and it was not easy. And we got criminal justice reform, and then I signed it. And then this Van Jones has a program that gets no ratings absolutely at all. And they say, Van Jones wants to thank everybody for criminal justice reform. So I called our great first lady over. I said, darling, please take a look. It's going to be so nice because, honestly, look, they couldn't have done even close without me. I got all these people together, got them done. Got, it was impossible. Uh, previous presidents couldn't even think about it. They couldn't even think about doing it, and they tried, although I don't think they tried too hard, but they could have never done it. So he gets up. And he starts by saying, I want to thank the Reverend Al Sharpton. I knew Al when he was very heavy. He looked better when he was heavy, it's true. He's one of the few people, he really looked better when he was heavy. He looked much better when he was heavy. I got to tell him, I have to explain, because I know him very well. He would admit that he has a lot of respect for your president, but he can't admit it on television. But he called and he said, I want to thank the Reverend Al Sharpton. And then 
name after name after name of people that I never heard of. My wife said, are they going to think about you? Right? Are they going to think about you? I said, darling, of course. I said, he's saving me till the end, because I was by far. It's true. And that is why together we are going to invest in our young people, making sure they have good jobs, good education. But she sort of smiled. She said, it's too bad. I said, yeah, it is. Then he said, I have one more thing to say. We must get out this year and fight and vote against this president of the United States. Can you believe that? It's a true story. Van Jones, I mean, these are just terrible that they could. So I was a little embarrassed in front of our great first lady, but I'll, I'll live through it somehow. I recognized Israel's true capital and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. We recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, 52 years. We will pass universal background checks. People who have a violent past, including domestic violence, should not own a gun. More than $2 trillion in the United States military, including more than $150 million this year in Joint Base Charleston, Fort Jackson, and Paris Island. And we bad news for them because we're going to expand funding for Planned Parenthood. It's all about space. In a number of years, people are going to say, I can't believe we didn't do this sooner. You know, we need a little vision. We need a little foresight. And you know what I mentioned Space Force? At arenas like this, it gets one of the biggest hands because that's where it's at. That's where it's going, unfortunately or fortunately. We need it for defense. We need it for offense. Six spread. 72 years. For years, we watched as your politicians apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America, and we are standing up for the people of South Carolina. Bottom line is, it is not complicated. It is women who have a right to control their own bodies, not the government. So, as all of you know, the message of our campaign is us not me. And what that is about goes beyond an election. What it says is that our view of human life is that we are stronger when we understand that we are in it together. That every family in America has its share of problems and when my family cares about your family, and your family cares about my family, we all do better. I talked about a swamp. You never told me it was this bad, fellas. That swamp is bad. You got dirty cops at the top of the FBI. You got a lot of dirty people. But you also have phenomenal people in the FBI and other places. But we're draining that swamp. I never knew it was going to be this dirty. And we're getting a lot of help from a lot of great people. And with your help, we will lift millions more of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and from poverty to prosperity. That's what's happening. Think of it. From poverty to prosperity. Look at some of the stories that you have over there. Look at some of the incredible stories. And the other thing that us, not me, reflects is an understanding of the power structure in America, something that is not talked about terribly much in the media. When millions of working people stand up and demand decent wages, we're going to get decent wages. When people stand up and say we're not going to pay 50% of 
our income in housing, we're going to build the affordable housing we need. When moms and dads demand affordable, high-quality child care, we'll get affordable, high-quality child care. We will achieve new breakthroughs in science and medicine, finding new cures for childhood cancer infectious diseases like we're working on right now and ending the AIDS epidemic. Nobody thought this was possible in less now than nine years and it should have been started before. We will end the AIDS epidemic. Who would have thought we could have done that? We will land the first woman on the moon and become the first nation in the world to plant our flag on Mars. You have to land on moon and then you go to Mars. We will defend privacy, free speech, religion. When young people say they don't want to leave college deeply in debt, we'll get free tuition at public colleges and universities. Win the Democratic nomination. To defeat Donald Trump and to transform this country and create an economy and a government that works for all, not just the people on top. Springfield, thank you. We stand on the shoulders of American patriots who have crossed the oceans, blazed the trails, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, dug out the Panama Canal, laid down the railroads, revolutionized industry, liberated millions from poverty, hunger and disease, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and we are making it greater every single day. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people, with your help, your devotion, and your drive. We are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. So you have the best year ever on record, right, South? It's the best year you've ever had, right? You have a great governor, you have two great senators, great congressmen. The greatest year you've ever had. But some people in South Carolina are getting a little tired, I'm surprised to hear this, of winning. I'm very surprised. And some actually called their two great senators into a big meeting, a town hall. And they said, Senator Scott, Senator Lindsey Graham, we're tired of winning in South Carolina. Can't do it anymore. It's too much. It's too much. We've had years where we weren't winning and it was okay. We couldn't get jobs. We took it easy. But we, we just want you to go and see your friend, the president. And we want you to represent us and we want you to say, Mr. President, South Carolina is tired of winning. We don't want to win anymore. We are tired, sick, tired of winning. And they're going to come in today, sir. I hate to tell you, but the people of South Carolina don't want to win anymore. And I'll say, Mr. Senators, let me tell you something. South Carolina does want to win. They want to win more than anybody. And we're not going to change a thing because we're winning like never before. And you know what? We're going to keep it that way. Sorry, Senators. Go back to South Carolina, Senators. Go back to South Carolina. Because we are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. America is thriving like never before. And ladies and gentlemen of South Carolina, the best is yet to come. Best is yet to come. The best is yet to come.
Because together we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, South Carolina. Thank you.